Hey, how y'all doing out there? I'm back with you with another video. Today, I want to talk about the Note 9 in 2021. Now, to many people, this was Samsung's best phone they ever made. And that's not just me saying that. That's a lot of people. Every time I look at a Note 9 video, there's tons and tons of people said this was Samsung's best phone they ever made. Now, I disagree with that to some degree, but... I must admit the Note 9 was a all-time great phone. It's a classic. It's a phone that you definitely should hold on to, especially if you're not having any issues with it. You know, it's a flagship phone and it's packed with all kind of features. It got all the goodies. It's got it has a bunch of stuff that these newer devices don't even have. And I'm talking about the Note 10 Plus, the Note 10, the Note 21 Ultra, the Note 20. This phone has a lot of things those phones do not even have. So this was Samsung's, one of Samsung's greatest devices they ever made. I absolutely love it. Um, and the thing about it, if you can, you can find this phone for, for brand new. Now, listen to me, brand new under $400 and open box in some cases under 300. So I'm telling you right now, it's still, this phone is not outdated by any means of Unfortunately, it's not getting any more Android updates or any more One UI updates, but it just got 2.5 just a couple months ago. So with that, Samsung did breathe some new life into the device. So it is running even better. The battery life is even better, at least for my, my unit. I can't speak for everyone, but this is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful device. I have the Cloud Silver here. Um, now, this is the 8 gig, 512 uh, internal storage variant, and this thing is an absolute beast. I love the build quality on this device. Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and the back has a nice thickness to it, has a nice weight to it. Now, this, this device is actually a little heavier uh, than my Note 10 Plus. It has a little more weight to it. It's a little bit thicker, and I love how it feels in the hand. It's nice and comfortable. A lot of people love of the Note series, not not necessarily for the S Pen, but they love that boxy shape. You know, they, they love that boxy shape. You're not gonna get that with the S series. You know, it's a little more rounded off. But with the Note, you get that boxy, that boxy um style. And a lot of people like that, especially when you're looking at media content. Now I know with me, when I'm looking at media content <clears throat> on my Note 10 Plus, it looks like it's a little TV in my hand because of that because it's a nice boxy shape and I love that that TV look. I love that. So let, let's talk about the Note 9 in 2021. Now, I know for a fact, a lot of people will not upgrade to the newer notes because this note here had no compromises. The only thing that this phone was missing was a wide angle lens camera. That's it, it had everything. You know, this is when Samsung was giving you everything. This is when Samsung was completely loading up the phone. And when when this phone was released and it was a thousand dollars, I didn't really have a problem with it, even though I didn't pay a thousand dollars for it. I paid way less than that for it. But it's still it was kind of worth it based on all the stuff you were getting with it. I mean, you got a lot. You know, nobody likes to pay that amount of money. Don't get me wrong. But for what you were getting, it was definitely worth it. So let's talk about some of those things. So you start off with a 6.4 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display with HDR10 and 516 pixel density. So the display on this is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now let me let me turn it down because I know it's going to be too bright for the camera. I like my display up really high as you can tell. I mean just absolute eye candy beautiful quad hd display super amoled samsung makes the best displays hands down and of course when you turn it off you got that always on display which i have to have you you can see the time you can see the time you can see the date the day the battery percentage and you can see your notifications and of course you got the 3d button here that activates the iris sensor iris sensor is what you use to open up device which irises which i definitely miss on the note 10 plus also you got the fingerprint sensor in the back 
which a lot of people like. A lot of people don't like the in display. Now I like I prefer the the fingerprint sensor on the front of the device. Even though I don't I got used to having it on the back, but I prefer it in the front in the displays. You know, it was, wasn't a problem for me. Um with this design, of course, you got a small bezel on the top and the bottom, which is not an issue. At the same time, you got no notch up there. Okay? No notch, no cutout. A lot of people like that. There's some people that don't want that little punch out uh cut out punch out hole even if it's really small they just don't want anything you know in their on their display like that they just don't want that interference okay so with this you definitely don't have to worry about that at all it's a 6.4 inch so you're getting a big device you're getting really no bezels on the sides at all it's a little curved and it's just absolutely beautiful you're getting an led notification sensor back there which you don't get unfortunately on the note 10 plus or the note 20 ultra so you're getting that on here as well on the back you're also getting a heart rate monitor which is something they removed now i know a lot of people are not going to complain about that and, and most people don't even mention it but i have to mention it because i used it it also measured your stress level your blood oxygen level your blood pressure your your, your um <clears throat> you know your heart rate of course and I used it. I like the heart rate monitor. I didn't have a problem with it. I, I really wish it was still on here. You know, it's part of Samsung Health, and I used it quite a bit. Okay. So that's just a few things I'm mentioning now. Of course, you got dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, which sound really good. Now they're not as loud as the Note 10 Plus, but when this phone was released, they sounded really, really good to me because prior to that, the Note 8 only had one downfire speaker that was really mediocre. So this is when Samsung started putting dual stereo speakers on their premium devices, and um, it really sounded good. Um, you get good quality sound. Like I said, not the loudest, but you're going to get still good quality sound out of those dual stereo speakers. Of course, you're getting face unlock. Now, I didn't really use face unlock on here because you got the iris sensor, and the iris sensor is so much more secure. And every time you press that home button on the front, it would automatically trigger the iris sensor, and when you open your phone right up. So, but you do have face unlock on here. Now you could use it also the iris sensor and the face unlock together at the same time. So if it don't register your face, it'll register your irises. If it don't register your irises, it'll, it'll register your face. So you had, you could use them in concert. Now I just used the iris sensor by itself because I felt like it just worked faster than the combination to me. I can't speak for other people. I'm only speaking from my experience. So I, I usually just use either the fingerprint sensor or the iris sensor. And I'm going to be honest with you, most of the time I always use the iris sensor because I always liked having a way to open up my phone on the front as opposed to the back. All right, now, <clears throat> of course, you got the heart rate monitor I talked about. You're getting fast wireless charging, which you can charge your phone like about two hours and 42 minutes from zero to 100 percent. You got fast wired charging, which takes about an hour and 42 minutes um, from zero to 100, which is not bad. I mean, it's slow comparison to the newer devices which have 30 uh, watt warp charging, 50 watt fast charging, 65 watt <laughs> uh, charging, 25 watt super fast charging. Also, there's a, a Xiaomi phone that has 120 watt super fast charging. So um, fast charging has come a long way with technology with these phones, but this one is still adequate enough. Most people charge their phone up overnight anyway, so that's not the biggest deal. Of course, you got the one-handed mode, which I love, especially when people complain about phones being too big. You could just make them smaller. That's all you got to do. Just just slide down on that home button, makes it smaller. You can move it from left to right, and you're good to go. So I love one-handed mode. I wish every Android phone had one-handed mode because I think when you're dealing with these phones, most of these phones today are pretty big. So that one-handed mode comes in handy. I know I use it a lot because my, you know, I don't have huge hands. So a lot of times it comes in handy for me. On this phone also, you're getting um, you're getting Android 10. You're not, of course, you're not getting Android 11, unfortunately. Now I really believe Samsung really messed up. They this phone was so great and it was loved by so many people. I remember when it came out in 2018, it was the phone of the year, and you know by most uh, tech enthusiasts, it was definitely the phone of the year, no doubt about it. And it's a shame they just would not give it just one more. Um, update to android 11 that would have been really really nice and it would have showed a lot of love and appreciation to their consumers but they just didn't do that so you do have one ui 2.5 
and, and unfortunately it's not getting any more, even any more, as far as I know, any more Samsung updates. So no, no one UI 3.0, which is the latest, no 3.1, which is the latest now. The 3.0 is what I have on my Note 10 Plus. Of course you get your edge panels, you know, your edge lighting. So your edge panels, I use these all the time, which I said before. So that's cool, you know, that you got them on here as well. You're getting a 4,000 milliamp battery. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can easily get through a full day of battery use on this device easily. Now, if you're a super power user and you're shooting 4K video and you're playing heavily intensified games, you may need to charge the phone up. But for those that, you know, normally use your phone normally, you'll definitely get through a day, um, a regular work day, no problem at all, easily, okay? Of course, you're getting um, secure folder. You're getting Samsung Dex, which I love. And not only Samsung Dex, but wireless Samsung Dex. So you can use your phone as a uh, laptop, you know, get that laptop um, desk, desk experience. So I love that. You're getting Samsung Pay with MST, of course, with the Note 20. 20 uh 20 ultra not 20 ultra i'm sorry the s21 ultra they took the mst capability off that device but with the note 10 of course you still have that which means you could go up to any terminal that uses any type of credit card and your samsung pay will work okay it doesn't have to be the more updated uh terminals when you go to pay for things you know shopping anywhere Anything that accepts credit cards of any kind, you can use the Note 9 because it has MST and it will work. Of course, also, you're getting expandable memory up to 500 gigs. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, I already have a 512 gig variant. And then on top of that, I can expand the memory up to 500 gigs. And I do have a 500 gig uh, SD card in there. So, I have a terabyte of gigage on my device, which I need because I am a storage monster. And I got that from Flossie Carter. That was something he put on one of his videos, either a phone thug or storage monster. I'm definitely a storage monster. I need a lot and lot of storage. All right. So that's cool. <clears throat> You're getting NFC. This phone is IP68 water and dust resistant. You're getting eight gigs of RAM, Bluetooth 5.0, and with the cameras, of course, you get your two cameras on the back. You got the 12 megapixel main camera, the 12 megapixel uh, telephoto with uh, two times optical zoom. Of course, you got optical image stabilization. You get LED flash. So, I mean, the cameras, this thing still takes really, really good photos. I mean, really, with the really good lighting conditions, takes very, very, very good photos and high quality videos as well. The only problem I have, and this is why I love my Note 10 Plus a little bit better, is because when you're trying to use, say, 4K at 60 frames per second, which you can shoot on here, it's going to cap out at five minutes, and then the video is going to stop. And if you're using 1080p at 60 frames, it's going to stop at 10 minutes. Okay, it's going to cap out at that. And if you're using 1080p at 30 frames per second, it's going to stop in 20 minutes. So with the Note 10 Plus, there's unlimited on everything, 4K, um, and even, um, and especially, of course, 1080p at 60. So there's no cap. Now, this thing does shoot at 4K at 30 on the front, not 4K at 60, which is not the biggest deal because I think most people are going to shoot in um, 1080p, which really looks good. As long as you use that, um, the 60 frames per second, you're going to get the, the best picture and the, and the best, um, the smoothest picture. So... Um, that's one of the things that I love about the Note 10 Plus because it's unlimited. I can shoot in whatever mode I want for as long as I want. <clears throat> now, of course, you got the Bluetooth S Pen, which this was the first device to get the Bluetooth S Pen, where you could basically take pictures with the S Pen. You can control your media with the S Pen. And, of course, everybody knows the S Pen can do so many things. I mean, it's just packed with so many things, and I'm not going to get into that because that would take an hour. But the S Pen is awesome now i know y'all probably are wondering like he missed out on one thing that he didn't even mention in all of this time he even talk about the note nine no i didn't forget about it and i believe this is the biggest reason why a lot of people refuse to upgrade to any other notes that little hole right there at the bottom there that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack 
there's a lot of people out there that just not willing to give up that headphone jack. I don't blame them because you're going to get a better overall sound. Okay. It's better than Bluetooth. Bluetooth is cool, but everybody don't like the sound that comes out of Bluetooth headphones. They want um, a wired connection so they can use their more expensive, um, more expensive headphones. Now I know now you can get a dongle and all of that, but it ain't nothing like just being able to take your headphones and just plug in. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, looking for that stupid dongle. All you got to do is plug them in and you're good to go. With this, you're going to be able to do that. It has a nice 32-bit audio DAC on here that sounds really good that you could adjust it with the different audio settings that Samsung gives you. They give you a lot of options when it comes to the audio where you could, you know, have it sound the way you want it to sound. So that's the that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of people won't give up the Note 9. Now, the only reason why I know that because, like I said, I watch a ton of YouTube videos and I'm always in the comment section, you know, just trying to get the feel of what people think about the device, you know, to this day. And the majority of them, all I keep hearing about, I'm not giving up my headphone jack. I'm not giving up my headphone jack. Now, I just dropped a video not too long ago about bringing back the headphone jack on premium devices because they're still on budget devices. They're still on mid-tier devices, but they just completely removed them from the premium devices which i think is really unfortunate and it's unfair and it's not right and i don't like it and you shouldn't like it either and you shouldn't tolerate it and the only way to get their attention is to not buy those newer devices now i know <clears throat> some people are going to say you need to get over it you need to move on this is the wave of the future i don't have to get over it i don't have to move on i could just buy an older device and just use that i could um put a rom on it you know there's other things that i could do i don't have to um, you know, buy something without a headphone jack. If I do that, I just choose to. But there's a lot of people out there that will they say, I'm going to use this phone until it completely dies. And some people, after it dies, they just put another battery in it. So <laughs> I'm telling you, there's some people out there, they don't like change. And that's something to me that they should have never removed um, from this device. Don't give me the excuse. You need, a, you, you need room for a bigger battery and you need room for this and room for that. I don't want to hear it. Because that's nonsense. They, they they just doing this because they want to push Bluetooth. And they want to push their Bluetooth headphones, which cost anywhere between $150 to $200, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. They have to pay that much for a pair, uh, you know, uh, Bluetooth headphones. I think it's totally ridiculous. Now, with the LG, they the only ones still left that's a flagship device. And I had the, the LG V60 that still not only has a headphone jack, but it has a big whopping 5,000 milliamp battery and a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC, which sounds absolutely amazing. So don't don't tell me you 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 took the you removed the headphone jack because you need room for a bigger battery and other um other parts. I don't want to hear that because LG is still putting them in their phone. Sony is also putting a headphone jack on their devices. So there are some companies out here that are still using a headphone jack on their premium devices. I'm not saying it's a lot of them, but there's still a few. And I appreciate that and I respect those other companies for doing that because I'm the kind of person, I'm all about options. I want options. Give me the option whether I want to use the jack or use my Bluetooth. And I like that. That's why so many people are in love with this device. And I'm not saying that's the only reason, but that's one of the biggest reasons why they're going to hold on to this device. But overall, is this device worth even picking up in 2021? I'm going to say absolutely yes. Especially if you can get it brand new for under $400. And open box is pretty much brand new, honestly. And you can get that for under $300. You can't beat that for all you're getting. I mean, keep in mind, you're getting a quad HD display with HDR10, Gorilla Glass 5, always on display, face unlock, iris sensor, LED notification sensor, Fear, uh, rear fingerprint sensor, dual stereo speakers, heart rate monitor, fast wireless charging, fast wired charging, one-handed mode, Android 10 with one UI 2.5 edge panels, edge lighting, secure folder, Samsung DeX, Samsung Pay, expandable memory up to 500 gigs, 8 gigs of RAM, AKG2 headphones, 512 gigs of internal storage, 4,000 milliamp battery, NFC, water and dust resistance, Bluetooth 5.0 and two great cameras, the S Pen and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You can't beat it. <laughs> you can't beat this that price for all of the stuff you're getting. This thing is getting this thing is fully loaded, fully packed with every feature you could think of. Like I said, 
The only thing is missing is the uh, wide angle lens. And of course, now the reason why I choose the Note 10 Plus as my favorite note, not the most complete note. I think this is still the most complete note. But the reason why I like the Note 10 Plus better is because you're getting more RAM at 12 gigs, getting more internal storage, which I always love. You're getting a bigger battery. You're getting louder speakers. You're getting um, better cameras, which are not capped off with those numbers, what I was telling you about. And that's important to me only because I need that because I do all of my videos with oh no, all my YouTube videos with my Note 10 Plus. I'm doing it right now. So I need something that's not going to keep shutting off for 10 minutes, five minutes. I just needed to just keep going until I'm finished. So that's important to me. And I like the fact that the Note 10 Plus has a, a taller and wider display and no bezel at all. So I just like that. It's just me. Now, I'm not saying it's just so much better than Note 9 because it's not. This is the most complete Note Samsung ever made. And this, to many people, is the best phone that Samsung has ever made, period. Now, that's just not me. That's a lot of other people. Like I said, I listen to the comments. I look, I read them. And there's so many people that absolutely love this device. And I'm one of them as well. That's why I still have it. All right. So thank you very much for taking the time to uh, view this content. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful. Um, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload another video. And I hope everybody out there is keeping safe. And I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.